The number of significant figures refers to the number of digits reported for the value of a measured or calculated quantity, indicating the precision of the value. Basically, this means if all quantities have X significant figures, I can't report my final answer with more than X significant figures. The measurement or the calculation dictates the number of significant figures. We have some rules to help us to decide how many significant figures a final answer should be, be it a measured value or calculated. The first rule deals with multiplying and dividing. When multiplying and dividing measured quantities, you give as many significant figures as the least found in the measurements used. Okay, so for the rule of multiplying and dividing, it is the least number of significant figures you find in the number. Example, 2.1 times 3.52. 2.1 has two significant figures. 3.52 has three significant figures. Since this is a multiplication, we follow this rule, which states that the least significant figures will dictate, which means then in this particular case, the 2.1 number with two significant figures is going to dictate the number of significant figures in my final answer. So therefore the answer must have only two significant figures. So if we multiply 2.1 times 3.52 we get 7.39. So the final answer here is 7.4. Two significant figures. Now the question comes up now how, what do I do with that 9 when I go to rounding numbers? What do I do with the preceding number? Do I go up? Do I go down? If the leftmost digit to be dropped is 5 or greater, like it is in this example, we're talking about number 9, we add 1 to the last digit to be retained. If it's less than 5, we leave it alone. So you can see in this particular example, we have 9, so therefore I will take that digit in front of it and raise it up, which makes it 7.4. Here's an example of less than 5, 1.214, and I want to round that one off. Well, since 4 is less than 5, we'll go ahead and say, okay, we'll drop that 4, and we'll leave the number in front alone, which means it's 1.21. Now what happens if you have a multiple step calculation? Typically what we do is we keep a minimum of one additional digit past the required significant figures during the calculation. We call this a guard digit. So for instance in this 1.214, the 4 in this case is a guard digit. Okay, and That's one more past the significant digits that we're supposed to have in our number. That helps us when we go to round off numbers, etc. in our final calculation. What we do sometimes is we take and we put a line under the real significant figure in the number. So we're saying the significant figure stops at that, that 1 there, and that 4 is a guard digit. Then we drop that guard digit when we get to the final answer. But we realize that when I look at 1.214, that that only really has three significant figures. That 4 is a guard digit. Now, here's an important rule. A lot of people forget this rule and only concentrate on the multiplication division, but there's two rules. There's a different rule when it comes to adding and subtracting measured quantities. In this case, we give the same number of decimals as the least found in the measurement used. doesn't matter the, the number of significant figures. It, measure, it matters on where the decimal place is. Example, have 84.2 plus 22.321 with an answer of 106.521. It doesn't matter what the number of six figs is in each of, them of the numbers in my addition. What matters is where is that decimal place is, the least decimal place in my numbers. Addition and subtraction doesn't depend on the number of significant digits in the calculation, but instead in the least decimal place, which is the case, which in this case is the tens place. We can see that 84.2 goes to the tens place, so that means, and as is our least one, that means I have to stop my final answer at the tens place, which means I would record the final answer in this case as 106.5.
stopping at the tens place. Notice my final answer has four sig figs, which is totally different than the three in the first number and five in the second one. It depends on the decimal place, not the number of sig figs. Now, what happens if you have several calculations, different types, multiplication, division, in, add and subtraction, etc.? You follow the arithmetic rules, which mean basically you'll do anything in parentheses first, follow the rule, whatever it may be, multiplication, division, or add and subtraction. Then you do multiplication, division, then you do addition, subtraction. The same procedure that your calculator uses, and that's why you got to be careful when you're using a calculator that you're punching in numbers exactly how you want it to work, because it's going to follow the arithmetic rules by the calculator. Let's look at an example. 3.38 minus 3.012. That gives you 0 0.367, which if we round that off into the correct sig figs would be 0 0.37. Now how do we come up with the location of the sig fig? Well, it's a subtraction here. Since it's a subtraction, we take the least decimal place to dictate the significant figures, which in this case is the hundreds place. Notice we're in the hundreds place in the first number, we're in the thousands place in the second number, which means that I have to finish in the hundreds place in my subtraction, which means I'm going to stop it right here after the 6, which means I'm going to have to round my number since this is greater than 5, which means I'll get 0.37 as my final answer. Let's look at this one. 2.4 times 10 to the negative third plus 3.56 times 10 to the negative first. At first inspection, this looks like that we have to stop at the tens place, but you got to realize this is not the tens place because I have 10 to the negative third. So this is three zeros over. Okay, so this is three powers of 10 off. So you got to either put these at the same power of 10 or write out the whole number. Either way, it doesn't matter, but you need to figure out where is that least decimal place since this is addition. This is addition, therefore the last decimal place dictates the sig figs, but notice that the different powers of, there are different powers of 10. We must change them both to the same power of 10 or write the number out to easily determine the least decimal place. I'm going to write them out, that way we can see it exactly. You can see if I take 2.4 times 10 to the negative third, move that decimal over three decimal places, okay, I get 0.0024. And do the same thing for my 3.6 times 10 to the negative first. That means I would move this over one decimal place. So I get 0 0.0024 and plus 0.356. Add them up. It's going to be by decimal place, which means I have to stop it at the thousands place. And round off, which would be 0 0.358. And if I want to put it back in scientific notation, since it was already in scientific notation, that would make it 3.58 times 10 to the negative first. Let's look at a combination. We have a multiplication and a division here. Well, in that case, since it's the same um, rule, doesn't matter. We just need to do our math correctly. So if we look at this, I will go ahead and do my 2.568 times 5.8 to get my numeric number there and then divide by my 4.186. Now, in this case, since it's multiplication and division, we need to select the least number of sig figs. So if you look at your numbers, you know that we have two sig figs here for 5.8. We have four for 2.568, and we have four for 4.186, which means then what's going to dictate us will be the two sig figs in our 5.8. Multiplication division, therefore the least number of sig figs dictates the significant figures. In this case, the number 5.8 dictates it to be two sig figs. Now notice that I gave also a guard digit in this problem. Since I know it's two sig figs, after I multiply my after I multiply my numerator, I'm going to keep my two sig figs plus one more guard digit. So that gives me 14.9. So my actual sig fig is after this underneath this four so I only have two sig figs in this number and that nine is a guard digit okay and that's a guard digit 
So now I'll do my division. So I have two sig figs versus four sig figs. Therefore, my final answer has to be two sig figs, which gets me 3.56, rounding off my six, which gives me a final answer of 3.6. Here's a combination of subtraction and multiplication in parentheses. This problem involves using both rules. We must follow order of operation and do the subtraction in the parentheses first, which would be your least decimal place, followed by the multiplication, time that 58.16, which would be the least number, and then finally do your first subtraction, which would once again be the least decimal place. So, first we'll do the parentheses, which they both got the same decimal place, which is the hundreds place. So then that will give me 0 0.37. So my next step will then be to do my multiplication by rules, which should be by least significant figures. That 0.37 has 2, and the 58.16 has 4, so it should be 2 sig figs. If I multiply that, I get 21.5, 2 sig figs. Remember that 5.5 .5 is my guard digit. The actual sig fig right now is at the ones place. Why is that important? Because I'm going to do subtraction now. So now I'm taking 4.18, which goes to the hundreds place. Subtracting something to the ones place where its sig fig is. So that means my final answer must be to the ones place, which in this case would be a negative 17.3 rounding to the correct Sig figs are negative 17. 6.3 plus 7.2 divided by 0.5256. Now, earlier we did one with a multiplication and division where it really didn't matter which one we did first, the multiplication or the division. In this case, it matters because I'm going to have to do the addition first because it's all over the division of that 0.5256. 5256, that's all in the numerator, so I'm going to have to do that addition first, even though there's no parentheses. This problem involves using both rules again. We must do the addition and numerator first, do your least decimal place, followed by your division, which is your least number. This is the type problem that if you plug in a calculator, you could get the wrong answer by not plugging in incorrectly. Uh, to get this one to work on a calculator, you would have to do 6.3 plus 7.2 in parentheses, then divide by 0.5256. If you just plug it in directly, 0.63 divided by uh, 0.5256, then add your 7.2. It's not going to give you the correct answer. So you need to watch how you plug it into your calculator. So first thing, we're going to handle the addition. They're both to the tens place, so by rule, my answer's got to be to the tens place, which gives me 13.5. Notice now my sig figs, now it's a division, I had to look at my sig figs. Notice now I have three sig figs, while in my denominator, I have four sig figs. So now it's going to be based on my number, least number of sig figs, which will be my 13.5. Now, also notice that the 6.3 plus 7.2 both had two sig figs, but since it was addition, it matters on the decimal place, so I gained the sig fig on this one. It gives me 25.69, rounding my guard digit. Gets me 25.7 as my final answer. An exact number is a number that arises when you count items or when you have a defined unit. For example, if I have nine coins, that's exactly nine. Or if I say I have 12 inches in a foot, that's a conversion factor. That's exactly 12 inches in a foot. So, for example, if I say I have nine coins in a bottle, I don't mean just nine by a single number. I mean 9.00000 infinity. It's exactly 9. Therefore, it has lots of sig figs on that, so it's not counted when we start using that number in our calculations in determining the number of sig figs in my final answer. Same thing when I say 12 inches is equal to foot. It's 12.00000 equal to 1 inch, 0.000 whatever. There are exactly 12 inches into 1 foot. 
Okay, so 12.000 inches to one foot, 1 1.000 foot. Of, oh, note that an exact number has no effect on significant figures in the calculation. It does not affect it. You do not take that into account when you determine numeric numbers to just figure out what is your least number of sig figs, etc., to determine your final answer with correct sig figs. We should be able to do some calculations using significant figures and following these rules in homework number four.